Welcome all to the advanced workshop. It's, uh, it's clearly labeled as an advanced workshop, so I hope that everybody here is a seasoned, hardened veteran. But data trees remain a problem, even for me. Uh, it's often hard to work with them. And I'd like to give you some background first about why we need them in the first place. So in, in programming, there are lots of ways to store data, right? There's your variables, your arrays, lists, linked lists, sorted lists, hash tables, stacks, queues, the list goes on. But in Grasshopper, there's only one way to store data, and that one way is a data tree. Now, the point of a tree is to be able to identify every single every single piece of data within a tree. So for example, if I make a grid of points, let me make sure this is actually nice and big. So if it's 10 with, say, 8 cells by 12 cells, we have here a data tree of points which, in which every single point has a unique identifier that is a list of integers. In this case, we can actually have a look at this. That there's nine different branches. Each one has three integers. And each branch contains 13 items, each of which can again be identified by the number 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. We can see this in 3D uh, using point lists. Uh, I can hide this thing here. OK, there we go. So here you see, in 3D, our nine lists of points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The first one on the left is identified by the, 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 the tree path 0, 0, 0. And tree paths are always written down as squarely brackets, number, semicolon, number, semicolon, number. So as we go down the list here, that's the this one over here. As we look at the uh, the fourth path, this one, one, two, three, four. This entire list is identified by zero, zero, three. Furthermore, within these lists, we have a list of points, and the first point is let's see, let's go to purple. So this first point here, the, the full path to, to represent this point is, oh, that was text, is 0, 0, 3. Uh, that's hard to see. Can everybody see that, that color? I'll write it in, uh, in red anyway. 0, 0, 3 and then 0. So this bit identifies in which list it occurs, and this bit identifies the number of, the, of its sequence in the list. We can uh, change the way these, these uh, trees are laid out. There are lots of components which, which do this uh, for free. For example, there's a flattened tree, which takes all the data and puts it into a single list. So now instead of having nine lists of 13 items, we now have one list of all the items. And if I look at that, you can see that it goes from here and down to the next list and the next list and the next list all the way to the end. So that's, that's flattening. There is, let's see, there is grafting, which is sort of the opposite of, of flattening. If you graft a lift, list, or tree, what you get is that every individual item is now actually moved into its own little list. <clears throat> so instead of nine lists, we now have 117 lists, but every list only contains a single item. So in effect, it's always zero, in the next list, zero, next list, zero. And in fact, with this one here, it can now be identified as uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. 
bracket zero. This one over here, at the third location, can be identified by the path zero, 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 three, zero. Does it make sense so far to everyone? Uh, I don't see any questions, so I think I'll just move on with another example here. Let's let's make this a bit more complicated. Instead of having one one list or, or one grid, I'll make two grids, so we can see how they work if we have more than one of these these uh, structures. I will create two planes: one over here and one over there. This is now a bit, bit more complicated. We have two grids, and this, this is, is represented by having the second number in the path change. So it's first zero, 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 and these all are first in the first grid, and then it changes into one, and this represents the second grid. Uh, let's simplify this tree, because the first number is always zero, so it's not interesting. So let's remove it by simplifying, okay? So now we have this grid is entirely represented inside this part of the tree. And similarly, this grid is completely represented by the first part of the tree. You can tell this if we make two grids that have different counts. For example, for the second grid, I can make it smaller. I can make it only go to six and maybe only go to eight. This grid is smaller than this grid, and you can see that there's fewer branches, and that each branch has fewer numbers in it. So this represents the smaller of the two grids. Uh, there's a question that asks what determines the number zero at the start. Uh, it's always zero. You cannot change that, it, uh, at, at least for items, every Every list starts at zero, then one, two, three, until the final number. So if the final number is eight, it means the list contains a total of nine items, right? First item, second item, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, and ninth. This is the way most programming languages work. They always start counting at zero, and it, it, therefore I've also chosen to, to, to maintain that, that uh, tradition. The zeros in the paths are, in a sense, arbitrary. Uh, they could be different numbers, and we can change it if you want to, but by default, it starts at zero. Uh, there's a question about how I made the second grid. Uh, I supplied two planes, so each plane makes its own grid. And I'm also supplying two different numbers for x and y sizes, so they actually look different. OK. So this is all, uh, this should all be fairly standard stuff. You have components like Flatten, like Graph, that do specific things. But this is all about customization. Uh, 